Meeting uh, to order for Monday, June 24, 2020. If you would stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Knudsen, could you call roll? David Adams. Here. Austin Bonta. Tom Cherry. Here. Carrie oh, Gunning. Can hear you. Move the mic a little Sorry. closer. Did you say my name's Kirk? Carrie Gunning. Here. <laughs> Black Bat. <laughs> Mike Hill. Here. Gina Geis Hurst. Here. Luke Wyman. Here. Denise Little. Here. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the um, minutes? And if so, may I have a motion? I move to approve them. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any corrections or additions? No. No. David Adams? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Kerry Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Abstain. Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. Hey, Gina, could you move to Austin's seat? Thank you. Could we go ahead and call our first new business for public hearing? <laughs> we have Z0320-0010. Great Lakes Engineering Incorporated, care of attorney Karen Tellian, 6195 Central Avenue, Portage, Indiana, requesting a change of zoning from C1, uh, small to medium scale commercial, to R2, low density residential, 
at the corner of Portage Avenue and Crispin Road. Good evening. Good evening. I am John Peters. I am actually here for Karen Kelly. When this matter was rescheduled, she had a conflict and she was out of town. So uh, I am representing uh, Great Lakes Engineering, and with me is Mary Little, who is the senior engineer. Engine, uh, senior designer for Great Lakes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we are here to uh, ask for your consideration. John, would you talk into the mic a little bit more? Is, is that better? Yes. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. It's okay. hard, it's hard with the masks. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm getting used to this, I too. Um, we are asking... Uh, the, the plan commission to uh, send a favorable consideration for rezoning a two acre parcel of property on the northeast corner of Chrisman Road and uh, Portage Avenue. Um, this property is uh, presently zoned C1 and institutional. Uh, there is a staff report. Can I assume that everybody has a member, has, a, has the yes. staff report? Yes. yes. The staff report actually has a map of what the, the, the zoning is and what we would like it to be. Uh, the uh, attachment A shows that where the C1 in, and the institutional DIS is and the second one would show that we would like that two acre parcel to be uh, rezoned uh, to uh, R2. And th the general overall plan is that the property that is to the northeast of that, there's a 10 acre parcel that is also owned by Great Lakes Engineering. <clears throat> and the master plan is to have a subdivision called the Woodland Subdivision, which would be 12 acres then and 16 lots. And the, actually the uh, staff report goes through all five of the things that must be considered uh, before, you know, um, a recommendation for rezoning should be considered. And the staff report goes through every single one of them. And as you will see, the Portage Comprehensive Plan and future land use map uh, includes this property for future use as R2, which is what we are requesting. Um, so that, um, that, that would take care of that first criteria because it's in the, the Portage Comprehensive Plan. The second consideration are current conditions and characters of structures and use in the district. Um, the, pro uh, the property that's directly to the east of this is Grace Lutheran Church. That is institutional. That's certainly in line with a residential you know, designation. The property to the west is where the old Christman School was, and that's a vacant lot and it has been um, uh, zoned R2. The property to the south is all R2. The 10 acres uh, that my client owns to the north and east is, is R2. There is one commercial lot, a, a C1, that I think used to be the hardware store maybe 10 years ago. I think it's been vacant. That's the only one that doesn't actually fit in but uh, so <clears throat> actually this would uh, would be uh, the best use for this property is what what we believe and obviously if my clients were to put in a 16 lot subdivision on 12 acres it's going to improve the, the property values of all the property around there that's another consideration that uh, we believe that is justifiable uh, for the for the respon uh, responsible de development of growth 
um, that is because it's in it's already in the the concept uh, the comprehensive plan and the future land use map as um, R2 we believe that we have satisfied all the requirements so we're asking for a favorable uh, recommendation to the City Council to approve the, the zoning of that two acres which is abutting the 10 acres they already have to, to be re, uh, rezoned to R2. Thank you. Thank you. Before I open to the public hearing, um, everybody, if you want to speak for or against the petitioner, will have an opportunity to come up uh, to the podium and speak. Um, after we close the public hearing, um, there will be no more communication from the audience. Um, we do take very good notes to have everybody's questions answered if you have a question about something about this. So we will make sure that we have that answered for you. So now I will open the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? If not, I'll close the public hearing and open to questions for the commission. Uh, Should Madam we Chair? note that Austin Bonta has arrived uh, in the minutes? I did. Okay. Madam President, um, there are sign-in sheets on the stand for each of the public hearing items, and if you would print your name, address, that would be great. And anybody who's speaking on this petition should do the same. Thing. Any questions? What are you guys doing with the uh, current building that's on that property, the old hardware store? That we do not own that piece of property. Okay. That is a, that's, that's the one piece of property that's kind of sitting there. But everything around there is like basically is, is residential. Um, correct, right? Yeah. I do have a question. Do you need these green cards that we have? Uh, Kurt needs them for his, I need those. For his file. Any other questions from the commission? Yes. Um, the corner, that, that corner of that property, if memory serves me correctly, that's a pretty low area, correct? Well, you know, um, there was a question that was asked by one of the, the, uh, the residential owners, and they asked, they talked to John Hannon, and he said he was going to check that out and he went and checked it out and he said that it wasn't that there was it was all dry and that there was not a a present problem and and wondered whether he was referring to anything specifically or whether he just thought it was lower than some of the other property because if i remember correctly some years ago probably five or ten years ago there was a sign up there that it was going to be developed and rumor has it it wasn't developed because it was such a lowland area afraid of flooding has that been addressed at all possible flooding or anything in that area well my understanding from talking to john hannon was that he did not consider that to be a problem right now i do know you're right about that though because 10 years ago is when that 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 other about 10 or maybe even 15 years ago that 10 acres was mm -hmm. that that 10 acre i'm sorry that 10 acres uh was acquired and they were going to uh i mean it was rezoned to r2 i believe it was rezoned anyway but uh, my notes from current italians say that uh, that the owner died that uh, the market had kind of dried up and they so they didn't pursue it now that's all i know do you know anything else? Uh, that, that and Mary? there was a, um, the city actually did a detention pond in that area also, so that may have helped also. Okay. 
across well, the street. And more importantly, if when, when and if this comes back and goes through subdivision control as part of the subdivision they're describing, we'll be able to then hold their feet to the fire to the stormwater ordinance at that time. All the stormwater would have to be dealt with when they came back to subdivide into the subdivision they're describing. And I, and I didn't get almost any words. I couldn't understand you. Sorry, Scott. I, I couldn't understand what the echo. That's all right. So can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah. All right. So the issue is you're, you have a good question. So on this rezone, if it's approved, they have to come back under subdivision control at that point, which brings in the stormwater ordinance. And so at that point, any stormwater issues would be addressed before it was subdivided down the lots. I see. Okay. Thank so you. at this stage, it's the first hurdle, get it zoned correctly, then continue down the road for the entire subdivision, primary, plat, secondary. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. And I can, I was on the planning commission when this first came to the planning commission about 12 years ago. Um, and we were very close to approval, so, um, and all that drainage and buffer for Stormy Street, everything was in that plan. Any other questions from the commission? Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve it. We have a motion to approve. Do we uh, have a second? Are we having a, that is, the, is, the first, is the first a motion to send a favorable recommendation yes. to the council? Thank yes. You. Correct. I'll second. We have a motion to send a favorable recommendation to the city council. David Adams? Yes. Austin Bonta? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Kerry Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. So your next step will be for the City Council. And I believe it's set for July 1st. Already scheduled. Great. Thank you. Our next case is Z0320-0011 River Point Incorporated, care of attorney Todd Leith, Hopner, Wagner, and Evans, 103 East Lincoln Way, Valparaiso, Indiana, requesting a change of zoning from neighborhood commercial uh, and R2 low density residential to C2 medium to large scale commercial at the southeast corner of U.S. Highway 6 and Swanson Road, a vac vacant piece of land. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Todd Leith. I'm here on behalf of the petitioner this evening. Um, I have uh, submitted to you uh, the PowerPoint that's uh, on your screen, so uh, members of the, of the commission may, uh, may have that. Uh, the date's a little different. Uh, the date uh, was the original meeting, uh, and so I've updated the, uh, the slide. But other than that, uh, the, uh, the slides and your printout should be uh, the same. We're here, uh, as with the previous petition, to seek a zone change uh, and a favorable recommendation from you after hearing from the public and, and uh, uh, conducting the public hearing uh, to uh, favorably recommend to the town council, to the city council, uh, the rezoning of approximately half of a 32-acre parcel. Um, and that is on the uh, southeast corner of Swanson uh, and Highway 6 and in red on the slide that's uh, shown. You can see the parcel is north of the Brookview Point subdivision, west of some existing development uh, as well. Um, your zoning map uh, shows that the northern approximately 300 feet is zoned 
uh, neighborhood commercial NC, uh, which allows for a range of commercial uh, or, or uses within that district, uh, but stops at small retail. What we're asking, and uh, the balance of the property is zoned R2. So we're asking that we uh, basically slide that uh, zoning district down a little bit, and I'll explain a little bit, and, and I think I have another slide that'll better illustrate that. Um, some street views. Uh, this is the uh, looking at the property from the intersection of Swanson and Six. You'll see the Valvoline uh, oil change facility there. This is the Swanson Road uh, frontage. You can see there's very little development uh, along Swanson Road. Um, kind of a close-up of that Valvoline right on the corner. That's the exception out uh, when we looked at the property uh, aerial uh, in that uh, corner up in uh, here. That's the Valvoline oil change. So you can see it's already in the area developed commercially. And then um, further to the uh, east, on the other side of Willow Creek, the actual uh, water, uh, the flow, a uh, ditch, if you will, Willow Creek uh, is zoned C2, the same classification that we're asking for, just simply to be extended further west on the other side. We've done some uh, studies and investigation of the property, and uh, there are not insignificant wetlands on the property. Some of those wetlands, we can probably receive a permit to, uh, to fill those and mitigate uh, others, uh, but that uh, very large one along Highway 6 uh, is really going to eat into the ability to use uh, that 300-foot strip along Highway 6 that's zoned commercial, that NC commercial uh, district uh, today. So we'd like to be able to, like I said, work a little further south uh, and work around that wetland because that's the most significant wetland of, of them all. So here's kind of the inlay of what we're talking about. You can see that further to the east, there's already uh, the commercial zoning, and we kind of just want to extend that further out. So we're extending the commercial zoning uh, about 490 feet further to the south, changing it from NC to all C2, and there is still this area here between the, the extended line and Brookview is still uh, 532 feet. So there's a significant buffer uh, between the existing residential and what we're asking for being rezoned uh, to commercial and upgraded, if you will, to the C2 classification. Um, I, I think that uh, kind of explains what we're trying to do. Uh, why we're trying to do it is the C2 classification gives us a little bit more uh, flexibility in the retail uses that are allowed. Um, as I indicated, the NC, uh, as you probably know, uh, only allows for small-scale retail, uh, small jewelry shops, gift shops, and things of that nature. And what we're trying to do is have a 16-acre uh, area to work around the wetlands and create a more... Uh, upscale and more uh, larger, quite frankly, uh, retail shopping center, uh, which would in include uh, and we would anticipate more medium and large retail rather than the, the small retail that your ordinance uh, uh, limits right now with the existing um, neighborhood commercial in that area. Again, there's C2 classifications immediately abutting, as you can see from the slide, and uh, that uh, uh, that's the reason for our request. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have for those that come from the hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I will not now open for the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? And if you could sign in and state your name.
uh, Reverend Michael Cooper, uh, 5455 Klim Road uh, here in Portage. I'm here to speak against the uh, zoning change. I'm concerned uh, because it uh, involves, my concern involves the protection of Willow Creek that forms the border of this parcel. Um, at the last meeting, the parcel on the opposite bank of Willow Creek passed this body with a variance to build inside the buffer zone for Willow Creek. Protecting our watershed, especially at a point on Willow Creek where it begins the long meandering flow through the residential districts uh, from our, in our city from US 6 all the way to, to Highway 20 uh, is very important to me. Uh, many, of the, many of that meandering passes through your district, um, Councilperson Geishurst. Um, I'm concerned that the safeguards are not in place, uh, considering that a variance was issued at the last meeting uh, on the opposite bank, uh, and that variance was to allow for a parking lot of a auto body shop to extend well into the buffer zone of the watershed. Uh, an auto body shop that deals with uh, hazardous chemicals uh, and paints, as well as disabled vehicles that, that can leak from the uh, cars into the watershed, uh, in, into the parking lot and directly into the watershed too. So my concern is that these safeguards are not in place and so I'm asking until the city develops uh, kind of a clear protection and guidelines uh, for this important part of Willow Creek uh, that is being developed that uh, this zoning change be uh, denied. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? If not, I will close the public hearing and open to questions of the commission. Attorney Leith, do you have anything to respond with clear protection and guidelines for the watershed? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Let me see if I can't get this uh, restarted here. So um, the, the gentleman is, uh, is correct. There is a, um, a connection or, or a frontage with Willow Creek, the meandering eastern line of this property, the 32 acres, uh, does have a connection to the Willow Creek uh, bed itself. Your ordinance has three separate buffer yards with regard to protection of Willow Creek. And each one of those has a different level of concern. Obviously the most inner uh, area is uh, protected uh, to a higher degree. And the development on the east side uh, encroached only into the two outer buffers but not into that inner area uh, where the, the water flows and where the ditch is. And your engineers and your utility board approved that variance to encroach in that area. Um, and they did that based upon uh, engineering data and the specific site plan there. Now we're on the west side and we have a lot more space than they did on the east side. So I would not anticipate that there would be an encroachment at all into any three of these areas. One of the reasons why I can say that is, is because we have so much room, we got 16 acres, uh, if you approve this, to, to uh, create this uh, shopping center, working around the wetlands and working around the, the creek itself. So I don't think that there would be any problem uh, with uh, avoiding all contact with any of those buffer yards. The other thing that uh, I want to say is, is that all of the concerns that you might have or most of the concerns you might have with regard to some of the activities uh, with regard to hazardous uh, uh, chemicals and oil and, and so, so forth with the repair shop on the east side wouldn't necessarily be true on the west side in a retail facility. Yes, there are concerns with regard to water quality that come off of any parking lot, but those are managed 
uh, and your ordinance uh, already covers those protections. And as uh, your attorney uh, indicated on, the, on uh, one of the earlier petitions, when we have to go through the subdivision process, we're going to have those same protections. You have those same protections with regard to a building permit for commercial. They have to go through your development review, your site review, the engineering department, the stormwater department, uh, sanitation, all of your uh, city agencies are involved in the review process for anything that would go on this 16 acres. So I can, I can assure you that your ordinances are already in place. I work with the city, I know this, uh, and the, those buffer yards are not going to be waived unless there's good reason for it, and I just don't see with 16 acres why we would need to encroach. And would you add if you did want, if the development did want to encroach on the buffer yard setbacks, could you just elaborate on what that process would be again? So we have to have an engineering reason, and that engineering reason is a plan, a site plan, and that has to go to the utility board. And I, I and, then, and then eventually to the BZA to get the variance itself like you did on the... Does that go to the BZA? Yes. The BZA. No, that was for these uh, side yards or setbacks. Yeah, I, I think the encroachment. To get into the encroachment, you had to come to the BZA to get that, and that was after the recommendation, after the review. So there's, it's not as if, if, if in fact this was rezoned, yes. it's not as if you have carte blanche to be in those buffer yards. Absolutely do not. We have if you, if processes. Want, right. If you wanted to encroach into those, you, there's a process to go through, and that process leads you to, so it's normally leads you to a public hearing and more right. additional comment. Right. And, and I don't believe, I don't believe that the property on the east side was even three acres in size. I think it was much smaller than that. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you know how far those, that buff, those three buffers are? I don't, I'm, I'm, I would be guessing. Collectively, it's over a hundred feet, I believe. Uh, it's a total of 75, 75 feet. That area south of the buffer between the subdivision and the proposed uh, structures, is that yeah. going to remain wooded in that area or is that going to be? It, we're, we're going to keep that in the, its existing R2 district and we would anticipate my client's not the residential developer, so we would anticipate that whoever would buy that property would develop it into a single family, you right. know. Further down. Yeah, further down. Wooded lots are more valuable than lots that don't have trees on it. So uh, they're going to be trees removed to build detention ponds and roads and bring in utilities. But other than that, the trees remain. Any other questions? I have an additional one. Um, in the C2, you can have a gas station or a car wash. Okay. Um, is that part of the, the shopping center that you're considering? My client is not, um, does not have any particular use that they're looking for today. I, it's too soon for that. Okay. Um, the other thing is, how much of the land would be impervious? Would it all be asphalt or out of the 16 acres, are we totally covering it? Well, your ordinance doesn't allow that. Uh, so Besides our... You, 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 right. you, we've got you know, um, lot coverage uh, standards um, and we have to you know, create our own basin to manage our own stormwater and outlet it to um, either the roadside ditch with Department of Transportation approval or to Willow Creek with the city's approval. You know, those are engineering details. Um, I, I, I just don't know because I'm not the engineer. I don't design the sites. But I, I know that it's, you know, we, we, we saw um, the, um, number of wetlands that we had on the site. Uh, I just think yes. that some of those wetlands are going to be incorporated into the design. And 
it's not it's not going to be 16 I, I we, first of all we know it's not going to be 16 acres of pavement but I think it's going to be more um, green uh, than a normal shopping center that you would see like Kohl's or you know a JC Penney or something like that in a, in a super mall where you have that sea of asphalt simply because we're not going to want to fill all of those because it's too costly right <clears throat> any other questions Would anybody be interested in making a motion uh, to send an approval to the city council? A recommendation. Sorry. I'll make a motion to uh, send a favorable recommendation to council. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. David Adams. Yes. Austin Bonta? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Carrie Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? No. Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. Congratulations. Very good. Thank you so much. Petition is P0120 Franklin Land Associates, care of Kimley Horn Associates, 1001 Warrenville Road, Suite 350, Lyle, Illinois, seeking a primary plat approval for the replat of lots three and one of the GNG investment subdivision, two lots at 5947 and 5935 US Highway 6. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Bob Gage. I'm with GBT Realty. We are the developers on the proposed project. Uh, basically, we're here tonight looking for a uh, primary plat approval. Uh, we are subdividing a parent track of five acres. We are subdividing 0.94 acres out of that with a remainder of 3.98 acres uh, to remain with the parent track uh, for the proposed development of a tire retailer. Uh, I do have uh, Mickey Walker with me. She is with Kinley Horn. She is our civil engineer, and she can answer any specific questions that you may have. Um, good evening. I just passed out the PowerPoint that we had initially proposed for the virtual meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, we are on the agenda for three items tonight, one being the primary plat for the public hearing, the secondary plat, and then for the site plan. Um, do you want can us you to speak open? a little bit? Sorry. Um, we are on the agenda tonight for three items, the primary plat, the secondary plat, and then the site plan. Do you want us to only present on the primary plat to start with? I have you coming up again. Okay. Um, we, can run it, we, can, we, can do prime, we can do one presentation, two votes. Okay. That'll save everybody a little bit of time. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so as Bob mentioned, uh, we are here today to, um, for the primary plat approval for the subdivision for G&G Investments. Um, it is for lot three and a portion of lot one. Um, we are proposing to combine this to be 0.94 acres of land for a proposed Firestone. The primary plat has been, has been approved by the staff. Um, we have provided the existing conditions plan as well as the proposed conditions plan, which includes the utility layout, uh, proposed topography, as well as the proposed site plan. For the secondary plat, um, and you flip through about halfway through the presentation, um, it shows the lot combination area. So the existing lot three area is 0.83 acres, 
um, and we are proposing to add 0.11 acres to the south side as a part of lot one. That will leave lot one with 3.98 acres uh, for the property. On the existing property, there is a cross access easement for all three lots to use um, to get entered into the site, as well as an existing sanitary sewer easement to the north and an existing 15 foot utility easement to the east. Additionally, we are proposing to add a 24 foot wide cross access easement over the existing driveway that connects the G&G subdivision to the property to the east, um, as, well as, an exist as well as a 30 foot cross access easement to the south between lots three and the new lot one. Uh, finally, we're proposing one water easement, which will cover the existing water service line to lot one. For the site plan, uh, we're proposing a 6,200 square foot building with eight service bays. Um, the building and the lot placement allows for the compliance of lot one um, with the existing theater or should a, a new building be put there in the future. The site plan allows for yard setbacks of 40 feet to the north, 25 to the east and west, and 30 feet to the south. The required parking has only eight spaces, but we are proposing 29 spaces for, to allow for the successful operations of the Firestone. As of this date and as of uh, May 14th, we have completed all of the development review committee and engineering comments that we have received. Additionally, we received the Board of Zoning Appeals approval on the 27th of January for the special exception for an automobiles, uh, auto service center, as well as variances to the maximum lot coverage, uh, parking lots located within the yard, uh, parking lot located within the yard setback, as well as foundation plantings. That is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing. <coughs> but right before we yes. do that, let's make sure we call, because I think there's three cases on the agenda that are all the same thing. So right now we're dealing with P-01-20. And I think we should have Kurt call S-0120 and SP-0120. Open it up for the public hearing. Only one of them need a public hearing, but that's okay. Right. Do the public hearing and then at that point in time, the planning commission can start the primary plat, and if we get through that secondary plat, if we get through that, the site plat. Okay? So we will go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak for no, the... Let, one second. Let him call those other two real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Let, let's do that first. Okay. Since we have three petitions for basically the one location, okay, we have the primary plat, uh, we have... Um, the secondary plat, uh, which is S0120, Franklin Land Associates, care of Kimberly Horn, for the secondary plat at 5947 and 5935 U.S. Highway 6 on lots 3 and 1. And then we also have a site plan, SP0120, GBT Investments, care of Kimley Horn and Associates, um, 1001 Warrenville Road, Suite 350, Lyle, Illinois, seeking a site plan approval to construct a 6,262 um, 6, square foot Firestone Auto Service Center at 5947 U.S. Highway 6. So we will have three separate votes. After we close the public hearing, Correct. we'll have questions. We'll open it, ask additional questions. Yep. Correct. We will now open the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody to speak against the petitioner? Is there anybody to speak against the petitioner? If not, I close the public hearing. Um, and I would like to open questions to the commission uh, for the uh, first preliminary plat. Is that plat that's um, on the uh, old uh, theater parking lot? Yes, it's an existing parking lot. 
So it's, it, it's actually a, a camera from the side view here. And you're not tearing down the old theater? We are not, not this time. We're not tearing that down. <laughs> at least hide it. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be torn down soon. Kurt, do you have any comments on that, uh, on the blue extension? Pardon me, on the what? Uh, the 0.11 acres. It's the portion of lot one um, that we're combining into lot three. Right. They're, they're taking part of the lot, the lot one, which is the movie theater, okay, and they're adding it to lot three for the site plan. They went through uh, the BCA in January for setbacks, and they used this site plan when they went to the Board of Zoning Appeals, and they were granted a special exception and development standards on setbacks based that they're going to go through this process, okay? So they're presenting the primary plat, secondary plat, to basically take that property from lot one, add it to lot three. Uh, it's been reviewed by, you know, staff, it was reviewed by the county. Uh, they've updated those plats. We made them do a little bit more work on them to make the county happy and all of us happy. And uh, they're basically pretty clean right now. And is this one where we needed additional ADA parking? Uh, on the site plan, uh, they, uh, we, we asked for uh, basically the ADA to uh, have a raised curve, okay, and an ADA uh, design. Uh, so they took away the parking stops uh, and they made it to our, our desire so they have a clean site plan when it comes to that. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions? One last one on the, uh, so the entrance and exit to that is on Route 6? Yes. There's no back entrance to that or side entrance? Um, there is a cross access from the property that's to the east, okay. um, the existing triangle building. And did you say they're not tearing down the old theater? Not at this time. Um, I believe Bobby can speak to that one. Basically, that theater is going to be on a piece of property that we're not buying. So the, the seller that is selling us our parcel is still has control of that theater. I don't think they have any plans at this point. That, I'm not sure. They, I don't think they know what they're going to do with it at this point. Uh, I don't see that it's being there very much longer. Um, I do see in the future that they will tear that down and put up a new building there. But there's no plans been made at this point. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Madam President, uh, did you sign the, great. Would anybody like to make a motion? I'd first like to hear from Mr. Weir. First, 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 first moment, moment, it's going to be confusing. Right. So the first issue you have to address is actually P01-20. That's the primary plot approval for read plot lots 3 and 1, the G and G investment subdivision 2 lots, 5947 and 5935 U.S. Highway 6. That needs a motion to approve. I'd like to a motion to approve the plat. Primary plat. Primary, Primary plat. plat. Yes. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Austin seconds. We have a motion and a second to approve the primary plat. Uh, David Adams. Yes. Austin Bonta. Yes. Tom Cherry. Yes. Kerry Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. That would bring us now to S 01 20. The Secondary 
And that's for the 6,262 square foot Firestone? No. We, no. We, the top is page two. So we, we've done primary, now we would have to have a motion and a second and a roll and a vote on the secondary. Secondary. This is S0120. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the secondary plat. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. David Adams? Yes. Austin Bonta? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Kerry Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Gina Geisthurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. All right, moving along. Now we're on SP01-20. This will be the site plan approval to construct the 6,262 foot square, excuse me, square foot Firestone Auto Service Center, 5947 US Highway 6. I'll move that we approve the site plan. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the site plan. David Adams. Yes. Austin Bonta. Yes. Tom Cherry. Yes. Carrie Gunning. Yes. Mike Hill. Yes. Gina Guys Turst. Yes. Luke Wyman. Yes. Denise Little. Yes. Thank you. Our next case has a primary secondary plat also. Would the plan commission like me to read both those? Yes. Just a two lot uh, subdivision. Okay. So we have P0220, uh, Charlie and Darlene Properties LLC, care of DLZ Industrial LLC, 316 Tech Drive, Burns Harbor, Indiana seeking a primary plat approval for the Wendy subdivision located at the corners of Willow Creek, Swan, and Irving, two lots. We also have the secondary plat, S0220, um, for um, Charlie uh, and Darlene Properties, care of DLZ, um, at, the, at that location. Good evening. Good evening. Glad to see everybody's all healthy and, and good. Um, forgive me, I'm not as used to wearing these masks as either. Um, my name is Anthony Giscani. I'm a surveyor with uh, DLZ Industrial, representing Charlie and Darling Properties, uh, care of Jackson Hole Trust Company. Um, as Kurt said, we are presenting um, a meets and bounds parcel currently 2.19 acres and we're looking to have it subdivided into two lots each approximately one acre um, i believe you all have 11 by 17 versions of the primary and secondary plat i do have full size versions because i know the 11 by 17 can be a little difficult to read so if anybody wants to review those um, they're welcome to So essentially what we have is we have the Wendy's property um, that fronts onto Willow Creek Road. And then to the east of there going towards Irving Street, we have 
a, a, a wooded area. That, uh, that's the portion that they would like to uh, partition off and then later develop, um, convey, and then have that person develop it. So um, as part of the subdivision, um, we're also looking to dedicate a portion of the property um, near the corner of uh, Irving and uh, Swan because currently the existing sidewalks that are in that area are um, a bit into the property. So that just cleans that up a little bit. Plus with, uh, we added a utility easement along the uh, north, south, and east uh, lines of the property. Also because there were existing utilities in those areas and we wanted those to be encapsulated within utility easements as well. Um, Beyond that, I do not believe there's any other <coughs> items to address. Um, we've addressed all DRC comments uh, that were provided to us for the secondary and primary plats. Um, so I'll entertain uh, any questions from the public or from yourselves. Okay. I will go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? If not, I will close the public hearing and open to questions to the commission. Why? Well, I have a question. Yes. The, the entire lot is zoned commercial C2? It's a uh, zoned uh, Central Avenue business um, district. Okay. That's um, awfully hard to read, but that's covered on general note three on the uh, primary plat, which states the minimum setbacks for that zoning. And then you'll leave that parcel that you're breaking off as yes, we're not, we not seeking a zoning change. You are not keeping that zoning. No. no he's, they're not seeking a zoning. Are not. This okay. is not zoning. This is a split of property. Yeah. Correct. Yes. But it's right now it's all Central Avenue business. That's what I'm asking. That is it's, correct. It's, yeah. Correct. Okay. That's and that stays correct. the same for now. Right. Right. Okay. That's just what I wanted to make sure. Oh, of. yeah. Are there any other questions? Nope. Now we are voting for primary the primary plan approval of Windy subdivision. Is anybody willing to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the primary plan approval. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. David Adams? Yes. Austin Bonta? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Kerry Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. Now we will be voting on the secondary plat approval, which is case number S-02-20. I'll make a motion to approve that. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. I believe that was yeah. Carrie. Yeah. David Adams? Yes. Austin Bonta? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Carrie Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. 
Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Our next case is um, M0120, uh, Judy Nelson, uh, 2884 Winterberry Street, Portage, Indiana, seeking an amendment to uh, the Hidden Waters Plat notes to remove lot nine from note 15B, three, no perimeter fence or wall. Correct, hi everyone. Um, we would like to have that amended um, so that we could put a fence around it's the more usable part of our yard. Since we bought the property five years ago, we were the last. It was a farmland, and now we have over 40 houses coming to the north of us. Um, it is within the HOA um, rules, as it is not a privacy fence. It's the like the wrought iron look fence, and it will not hinder the um, drain that is on our property as that's farther back on our property. Um, we did go to the HOA meeting last August and asked for permission and they said yes and we could do it so we met with the fence guy and had the quote and put down the money and then when they went to do the permit that's when we found out there was more to it than we thought there was. So they've been nice enough to hold this fence for almost a year. Um, so we were told that we needed to come here and ask you to amend that note. Okay, thank you. I will now open the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Is there anybody here to speak for the petitioner? Kurt, I believe you have a letter. Uh, I do have a uh a letter, an email. Um, From Ryan. Um, uh, Dear Planning Commission members, my name is Ryan Mc, uh, McDowell. I live at 2876 Winterbury Road. Our home is just to the north of the Nelsons. They have informed me of the type of fence they're looking uh, to put in, and it appears that it is keeping with the update, updated bylaws of the Housing Association. Unfortunately, I have actually never seen an updated set of these bylaws. However, I was told from Altoff that these changes are in place now. My only comment would be to ensure that the HOA has in fact made these changes in their bylaws and that the HOA is aware and has approved the fence installation as requested. As far as I'm concerned, the Nelsons are great neighbors and I think uh, that a fence they are proposing will look great as long as the aforementioned items are accounted for. Uh, I'm in favor or I'm in full support. Is there anybody here to speak against the petitioner? If you'll go ahead and sign in. Sign. First, I ought to apologize for my appearance. I got a late phone call on this and came straight from work. I'm actually Shannon McNeish. I sit on the HOA as board of directors for Hidden Waters. Okay, could you state your name? Shannon McNeish. McNeish, okay. Yes. Uh, 
from what our understanding here is with the lot that was purchased, it is in our current HOA as prohibited from having a fence. I'm not here to ask for a no vote, I'm not here to ask for a yes vote. What I'm looking to do is be able to, as a new board member of the HOA uh, and new to this issue, that we can table this vote so I can work directly with my neighbor and a member of our HOA to see if we can come up with a resolution. The problem that we have with coming to the zoning, the planning commission to make this change is it, it starts a domino effect within the neighborhood. If everybody wasn't got an attorney, everybody came to the city to try to alter our HOA, which we have all agreed to and signed a contract at closing for, uh, it, it opens up a whole can of worms down the road beyond fences. So I, I apologize for not being prepared and having uh, the HOA documentation. Like I said, I got the late phone call at work, came from work. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not here asking you guys to shoot this down. What, I, what I'm asking is, is another month to where I can work directly with the homeowner as a representative of the HOA to see if we can resolve this without having to, to get a plat change. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Can I ask a question of the person just came up, or is that, is that allowed within this uh, ethics? We'd really like to wait till we close the public hearing and then sure. we, we can. No, I'm asking about this guy, because I don't think he can come back once we close the public hearing, can he? Correct. That's the problem. So, I guess, from the board's perspective, just remember, to some extent, and I don't mean to, I'm going to say it in a way that's going to make everyone think I'm going in a direction and I'm not, but whether or not the HOA changes or not isn't necessarily changing this plat. So my point, and it goes both directions, I would prefer everyone to work it out, but whatever's worked out, whether it would have to require a change at the HOA level through their covenants, if this is adopted through the covenants, and you know, irrespective of whatever happens with that, this note would have to be adjusted here also because it would still not get a permit through the city of Portage, irrespective of the covenants. So one is, you know, from this board's perspective, modifying the plat note has to occur if the fence is going to be allowed, irrespective of what happens at the covenant level. I'm not saying there isn't ramifications if the covenants aren't changed and aren't followed, but those are not the same ramifications that would occur here. So you're saying they're, 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 two, different, they're two different things? Correct. They are, and, 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 and more to the point, if they're, let's assume they sat down, worked it out, they still have to come back here to change it and or vice versa to some extent here so i guess and i, don't, I think kurt has already alluded to he doesn't have a copy of it but if anyone one question i would have is does anyone know whether or not the hoa has followed through and changed the covenants or not exactly hi i'm nathan tola uh, i'm the developer and i'm the president of the hoa so i can answer those questions can you sign in i did sign in yes okay. thank you uh, you know, we talk about this note on the plat. It wasn't just a note that we just grabbed when we were planning the subdivision. It was something that the Portage Planning Department insisted upon. They wanted openness. They wanted airiness. When you drove in the subdivision, they wanted you to be able to see as much as you possibly could. So this was something that they kind of gave to us. And you know what? It worked out very well. Now, my problem is, is that the subdivision is not 100% built out. I was given certain standards to develop the subdivision to. And I'm still required to do it at this time. So for someone to come in and change the standards on the plat, and the plat, from what you guys have taught me, is the Bible. Everything goes by the plat. So that's where my problem comes in. So I'd just like to make sure, this is not just a note. This is something that went with a lot of thought, a lot of care, a lot of meeting, and with an intention of openness. Thank you. We're going to pull. Okay. We're going to bring you back up okay. for questions. <laughs> Pardon? So, are, okay, are, let me. Close I guess our question is, because I was deferring to that, is can we ask this gentleman and the other gentleman questions? Because if they sit yes, down, because once once we close the public hearing, 
So if you so if you have a question name? for either either gentleman. Okay. I'm speaking as a representative for the HOA. Okay, thank you. All right, let me ask that a question again. Yeah. Did the executive board or the board of the HOA vote to send you here to speak for them? Thank you. I re received a phone call from both the two other members of the HOA asking me to attend today, yes. Okay. I'm not sure if I... It's not quite the same, but it's I'm more I'm not sure if I understood that. I'm not sure if I understood. Because I thought your question was going to be, did the HOA approve this or not? Was there a change in the HOA? According yeah. to what Mr. Ryan McDowell said, was that change, does that change exist? He was asking if he had no. authority to speak on behalf of It does not. So there was no change in the HOA. I can clarify what happened. We had a Last year, we had an annual meeting, and during the annual meeting, fences were brought up. And there, the majority of the subdivision, and every, the, the Hidden Waters is the main body of the subdivision. Then surrounding Hidden Waters is the addition to Hidden Waters, but it's all joined together underneath the HOA. Now, on the other parts of the H, there's only about five lots that you cannot have fences at all in Hidden Waters. The other lots that surround the body of water which don't have viewpoints, those can have fences similar to what she is trying to install. But the trouble is that when you drive in the subdivision, you've got these five lots which show the water there. And that's why those were remained open. And that's also where our, our uh, free basin waterway is too. Okay, I, I, I guess I asked a yes or no answer and I didn't get that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what, what, uh, give me your question exactly. Okay, it says here from Mr. McDowell, they inform this type of fence that they are looking to put in, and it appears that it is in keeping with the updated bylaws of the Housing Association. Is By that correct? The, yes no, or no? that is not correct. That is not correct. No, the bylaws, the only update to the bylaws uh, has been the uh, additions to it, and then one where we no longer allowed uh, wood type fences and so forth, no chain links. As far as the type of fences she wants, those are allowed in certain areas, but not in her area. But not in her area? No, not in those five lots there. And was that known at the time of purchase? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, that's been day, day one. I couldn't sell a lot. This was on the plat. A.J. Monroe was the planning uh, guy at that time, and this was very important to him. It's very important to everybody. We had to have openness. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say one more thing about that? Is that possible? Sure. Sure. Just, just to to clarify on that being known, I actually haven't. I can get if we can table this vote. I can get the HOA uh, contract to you guys, but I can read it verbatim to you. It says no perimeter fence or wall is permitted lots 9 through 13. It's in the contract that was received prior to closing. Okay, I will now close the public hearing and I will open up for questions from the commission. And if you'll come back up. Thank you. So I, 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 have, I have a general question. The covenants was drawn up based on the city of Portage saying you cannot put a fence on these X amount of lots. Correct. The petitioner is asking us to remove that note, and I guess I'm I guess I'm confused, uh, and I don't I don't want to come across as just point blank. But do we care what the HOA stipulation is? We're here to approve removing the note, and then the HOA can take that up on their own. And it, at that time, we, we would basically give the petitioner the availability to fight with the HOA or the HOA to fight with the petitioner based on us removing the note. Until we remove the note, there's no second step. We don't remove the note, but we give a variance. A variance. Okay. No. no. No, it's not a variance because that's the BZA. We are modifying the note. 
We would be removing it, correct? Correct. Or at least removing lot nine is the request from the note. It looks lot nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 as a fence with no perimeter fence or wall. Um, so they're only here requesting relief for lot nine. So Scott, if we were to vote yes, just for what's here for lot nine, would she immediately be able to make the fence? Or I think what you're saying is, or would she then have to go to the HOA to get their permission? It's just they can't give permission until we amend the note. I guess I'm asking. As they as well. they could give permission, but she has to come back. Right. I so have what I'm asking is that so if we were to do this now, she still can't build it until they give permission. Is this just a reverse, or is this on steps? Should she go to them first, and then they come to us? I don't know an awful lot about the legal makeup of the HOA. Our approval does not make the HOA a, approve her request. Correct. I, I guess that, and I apologize, it's my first meeting. Nope, you're fine. They're, they're, they're two separate, they're two completely separate things. In my and opinion. the bottom line is this, if we don't change the note, she can't get a building permit. Correct. If we change the note, she could get a building permit, but then the HOA and the, and the covenants, I'm sure says that either the HOA itself or an individual within, a landowner within the subdivision can enforce the covenants either as the HOA or as an individual and then that would be the stop gap there. So she has two stop signs right now. One is the note from us that won't allow the permit to be issued. And the other stop sign is the covenant restrictions that she's under. She's got to get clearance from both to be able to do it. Our stop gap is we don't allow the permit to be issued. And that's why she can't put the fence up. The HOA doesn't have that authority, but the HOA has the, um, uh, the hammer within the covenants themselves that basically I haven't read these covenants, but the standard language would be if she puts the fence up in violation of the covenants and they give her notice and she doesn't remove the fence and they're forced to sue her to enforce the covenants and they win, she pays their attorney fees. That's the standard language in these covenants, win, and then would either be the HOA board itself or an individual landowner within there. That's the normal language within covenants that to be able to enforce them. So that's the stop gap on the other side from their perspective. So Both have to happen to allow this to move forward. From our perspective, do we care right now about the HOA? We care about removing the note and let the HOA fall where the HOA falls. That's, that's what, that, is definitely, that is one way of looking at it. So okay. But I think you also have to take into consideration that the city demanded that this be in here. So we do have a care. It's not that we care or we don't care. The city asked for it. Well, for our behalf, but for the HOA, it's, it, we're not here to enforce the HOA rules. We're here Correct. to enforce the city the rules. Right. Correct. So if, if But when you say, do we care, if the city said, and, and we'll go back to the buffer, do they need to keep 75 foot of buffer to Willow Creek Road because they said they would? Yes. So this is, the city has asked for this. Correct. What I'm, what I, basically what I'm asking is we don't get involved in HOA arguments. That, that's not what's at hand here. No. Correct. Okay. But this is not an HOA argument. No. Well, it's, okay. This is, this is a recorded plat. Right. And they're with requirements set by the city. Approved by the city. Approved by the city. And this is the process to modify those. Correct. So let me ask a question. If she goes back to the HOA and they make a change, doesn't like 60% of the HOA have to approve that change? What, whatever, whatever the covenants their say. Are in. The, I think it's 60 or 75% have to approve that change. 60%. Okay, so can I say something? Can Absolutely. I, okay. At the meeting last August, we asked our HOA, which was Dan Ketway and Nathan Twilla. We said, can we put this fence up now that we know you're gonna have phase three, we're gonna have 40 something houses to the north of us. They both said yes. I have the letter from Lisa Ketway, which she's the one that we kind of get the emails and stuff from about the HOA, from Dan. It's a very generic looking, but saying yes, we give you permission to get this fence. Nathan said yes, I have neighbors that were at that meeting that will tell you that Nathan agreed that we could have this fence. And that's why when we left the meeting, we were like, okay, we can have the fence. Let's start getting a quote because we knew 
fences are not cheap. <laughs> Even though this isn't that big, it's still not cheap. Um, and sign the contract with the fence company because we thought that's all we had to do. Mm -hmm. We did not realize we had to do this on top of it. And I don't know if that plat note was made before you knew that there was going to be all those other houses. I don't, it doesn't matter. But I've already gotten the HOA is what I'm asking. Well, I what don't I'm know stating. if the HOA because they have to put it to a vote if they're going to change the, the covenants. Right, and, and they did that it. could be, right. But I mean, we right. just asked for ours and they said yes. So, and but, Shannon just became an HOA member according yeah. to our Facebook, like two days, I don't know. I yeah. Don't, that's the Facebook thing. But um, we had both of them, both representation of our HOA agree to it last year. Yeah. So that this is, this is a, this, I mean, not to digress, but this is a story as old as time. The HOAs are difficult. so. Lisa Catwig or Dan Catwig or even Nathan by himself didn't have the authority to say yes. Okay? So assuming that's all true, which I'm not arguing any of that, right. doesn't really matter. If, it, if she could and they said no, it wouldn't matter. And if they said yes and she can't, it wouldn't matter. So the problem is, is that it may have taken a long time to get here, but at the end of the day, for her to put this fence up, this note has to be modified and those covenants have to be modified. Now, there may be a way to get an exception through the covenants without changing all the covenant. I don't know. But ultimately, relief under both would have to occur for her to put this fence up without problems. Is there a reason that the city did not want, uh, did not want a fence on those properties? I'm sure there was, and we can, go, we can pull the minutes. I, I mean, some of it has to do with, I'm sure what Mr. Twilla is pointing out, it's the openness as you pull in to see the water. Some of it has to do with the attempting to not have a situation like is out on uh, six where you have a you have a pond or you have a water feature that's completely surrounded by everybody's back fence in their backyard and so it's just a water with a build with basically 17 different fences all the way around that the backyard i think some of that was the understanding of attempting to keep fences off of certain locations so that is probably about reading the minutes, one of the underlying logics of being able to do it so that you could see the water. And if you look at how where this lot lines up, um, lot nine, correct? Right, and the the big pond is behind us. So as you as you it's on one of the main roads and okay, and that's probably what the what the theory was. And that's now, why we did to, the open fence. To answer the question about when this was approved, this plat was approved, this is what was approved. So whether or not phase two, three, four, or however many we're at now, those would have been on different primary and secondary plats with whatever restrictions they would have. So in time, back in 2007-ish, this is what was approved under, that, under those thought patterns. And the amendment I saw that was um, dated the I think it was 2012. It said no lots on or no fences on our lot because of the um, drain. But as I said, our fence is away from the drain. It will not block anyone from trying to get to the drain if maintenance or whatever needs to be done with the drain occasionally. Our fence would not block that. And that is what the amendment, what date is this? Well, and when you, Five of 12. When you look at the note itself, note 15, on this, what you'll see is, is there's definitely an attempt because the note's pretty specific as far as the basically how much you could see through this fence. Mm -hmm. And so, if you notice, you've got a list of lots that it's 100% mm -hmm. privacy fence, and then you got some that are 60%, and then you got a handful that are zero. So, this was yeah. definitely at the time an attempt to try to make it not all fenced right that, it says no it says no perimeter fence or wall lots 9 10 11 12 13 the purpose of these additional restrictions as to lots 9 10 11 12 13 is to ensure that the drainage facility remains unobstructed that is what the newest amendment says 
that was dated 5-25-2012 and our fence does not obstruct the drains. So before we do make a motion one way or another to do anything, part of what I think we need to get to you as the board is we need to get to what is the fence because I think there might be a difference here between a stockade fence that you can't see through and a decorative metal fence and I don't know where we are in between but that's ultimately when you start digging through the note you realize that ultimately how much you could see how much we were actually physically blocking the vision was obviously a significant consideration to the fencing note which leads me to what is your what is the proposed fence it's the the like the rod i'm looking the open I, there's a word for it and i cannot it's leaving me right Opacity. now Opacity. thank you that's it <laughs> it is this it is you can see through the fence and the last and the last one i think she needs to try to get in the record here is where is the fence is she proposing on the lot as it relates Do you have to the pot? that drawing i think that was in it's on packet there. from the first it's on there yeah we have a copy yes. of that is it above this line is that it's a red fence line yeah. <clears throat> when you um yeah, look at that site plan the, that she presented in the packet right. I think also, I think there are two good points we should note that information before we make a real decision. And then the other one is why did the city say no fence and did they specify that type of thing and if they specified why, you know, that they yeah. had no fence. Well, I think the amendment. Right. And, I, and I the, other, the, the other the other the other part of that, that is was, too. I'm sorry. I was on the planning commission when this happened. So when you go in, there's a 14 acre nature preserve and then there's a huge pond or preserve um, with a lot of wild animals and there's a water sprinkler so when you drive in no there's water no water sprinkler oh i'm sorry i thought there was one no i apologize that's fine um when you drive in that's what you see at the end of the road and then with the homes at 60 percent opacity that means their fence have to be open 60 percent for people to see through. Mm -hmm. It was looking to go, the strat plan at that point was that we wanted something better than small lots with 14 different kind of fences all around that we wanted it to be open and clear. But y'all, if I understood correctly, was it mentioned that there was also more uh, houses put on this on, on more in another section was developed since after these proposals were uh, required by the city which right. could they change all, which could change the looks of everything and not make it so less appealing if she had a fence that had enough opacity that it looked nice I guess is what I, what kind of how I'm looking at it if there's changes then I think those should be brought to us uh, by the petitioner okay pictures or whatever they have of what's changed from the beginning and then when you bought the property okay and and then so we have an idea of what it looks like and you know is it is it that detrimental to have a fence that even even the one you're having is, is nice clear view and that kind of stuff it's not like it's a, a complete privacy fence um it might be worth worthwhile well i can say that it was known because the road is going to where the area that she's talking about so the, the road was put there for that phase. So I, I think his original question was, what was the city's intent? And you were on the planning commission at some point during that, and then there was an amendment in 2012 that states why they, they still at that point did not want fences well, on that there. that did not remove no fences. Correct. That only was an additional language. Correct, saying we don't want fences there to block access to the waterways or whatever is over there. And I believe since then, there is a phase two of the subdivision that There's is There's actually like five. Five. <laughs> There's several phases to the subdivision that are currently ongoing, correct? Additional phases that you were stating has been added on since. 
How is that obstructing the view from that same scenery area? That's not on the street that you drive in. It is okay. to the north. Okay. I'm not on the street you drive in. No, I'm but to you're the north. on the street that backs up to mm -hmm. the preserve. Yeah, because I'm over one. Can I ask why you guys want the fence? Yes, because so when we bought the property five years ago, the, the main road was like here and we were over here and it was a farmland. No one even came in front of our house. No one, there was no traffic, nothing, because the road stopped and there was um, like a fence blocking it. So no one ever, it was just us and then we ended up with the next door neighbor. And then all of a sudden we're told, phase, we call it phase three, I don't know if that's the right phase. All of a sudden, we have 40-something houses built to the north of us, so now we're surrounded by houses, so we just want to protect our part of the yard when the kids are out there, the dogs are out there. Everybody stays in, and everybody that doesn't need to be in gets to stay out, and that's why we're only doing part of our yard, is just to kind of protect, I guess, why everybody gets a fence. <laughs> that's not why I got one. I don't like looking at my neighbors. <laughs> I'm being nice and politically correct at this moment. I'm not trying to be a thing. No. Let's say I'm just trying to learn about this as it goes. So just making sure I understand it, if we vote yes on this, it really doesn't end this whole separate issue that they've got with the HOA. Is there, speaking, I don't mean to say philosophically, but strategy-wise, is there any kind of, I think what you were asking about, like kind of like should we care, is there any merit to expecting that to happen first before we move? Does it matter? Is there an issue with if we do this, might other people come to get things approved? And then who knows how much time it takes for any one thing to get you know, worked out with them? And like you say, or is that not our concern at all? Should we just certainly be the, the merit of the individual property? So. I think that's kind of why the, the question to maybe table it. Yeah to see what they can work out before we make any kind of decision? Yeah, I, I tend to think if, if, if the, the board for the HOA approves the fence, that would carry significant weight here. And I have their approval. No, you don't. I have the letter. Uh, I have the but letter I don't think I have... it's, it's not an approval from the, is it a voting approval? Let me... Well, there was only two members and they both were there and said yes. And that's these two gentlemen? No, he just moved in. It was Nathan and it was Dan Ketway. So you're saying it has to be a vote by the residents, or do we not know? We have to see the actual HOAs set up to know if that's a legit approval. Again, yeah, I'm not trying to say No, that. I know. They, if they make a change to the covenants, I believe it's 60% of the residents have to vote to approve a change to the covenants. Again, the two people right. cannot. No, We've done it once because we voted no wood fences in the neighborhood. There's one wood fence that made it before that vote. Uh, all right. I, I'm Nathan. Could you come up for a second? Give me one second. No, go ahead. How many? This this is a built-out subdivision, right? No. Okay. So how many? So you still own a significant lots, right? Oh, no, no. Okay, and then Dan Catwig owns some anymore or no? He owns his own personal business. Okay, so right now who's the HOA board? The HOA board is myself, Dan Catwig, and um, John. Okay, so that's the current membership? Yes, actually right now it's in the process. It's with the attorneys. We're getting ready to send out notices. We're just trying to find a meeting place so that we can hold an election because I would love to turn this thing over to all the residents. Well, that was the question yeah, I was asking. Meeting. So. At right now, you're in the process of turning it over to the homeowners themselves. Yes, I would like the homeowners to be able to make that decision because okay. they all bought it there all right. based upon the That makes sense. Okay, Nathan, hold on. When is that? When do you think it's getting turned over to the freeholders? As soon as if we can find a meeting place, we tend to have a day of September 5th. Okay. So what? So when you do when you get to a subdivision and you're building it out and it's going to have an HOA when you have to get to a certain percentage of it built out before it gets turned over to the homeowners to run themselves 
So while Nathan or whoever owned lots, until they get to a certain percentage, and you're probably close to the percentages while you're activating it, correct? Yes, sir. He then, within those covenants, because when it first got developed, he owned all the lots. So he was the HOA. So as these lots have sold, when they get to a certain percentage, the whole HOA and the covenants gets turned over to the people that live there and own the lots. They haven't got quite got there yet because they probably haven't got enough. They probably just got to the amount of lots necessary to do that. So now that I understand a little bit more, I understand why we could have some confusion now. Ultimately, Dan Kentwig probably didn't have any authority at that point in time to make the decision because the HOA hasn't been turned over. Nathan's the only one that turn, can turn it over at this point. But I mean, he has to, but the process has to occur. So in all honesty, knowing that now, that's, this isn't changing until that board, until that HOA gets turned over. So Scott, who had the authority before the board gets turned over? Someone has to have the authority to make decisions. Nathan. And solely Nathan. Solely Nathan. Do you have a letter from Nathan saying that the fence can be changed? No, I got it from Dan because Dan's always the person that hands out all the letters to HOA, to the individuals in the neighborhood that need a letter from the HOA asking for fences or asking for um, sheds. It's always Dan that gives those letters. But the difference was is that it was not a note on the recorded plat. Right, that's why I'm right. here, I guess, is because correct. Yeah, I'm asking so he, you. So he could say, okay, you're, you can have a shed, but it has to match your house. So, right. All right, let me ask you more specific. So there's an architectural committee that needs approval, and then they get a letter, and then that's what they need to go get a permit from the city. All right, and so you're either delegating that to Dan or something along those lines. That's what's happening. I have, I have appoint two people on board to serve my discretion. Uh, but I've got to tell you, I've never given approval for this. And speaking to Dan, Dan has never given approval for this. But I would just like the residents to be able to do it. We're this close. It affects them. They have, they've got the right to live in all these houses. And if they go up with it, it's these conditions. Let's just let them do it. Well, and be specific because we're until it's turned over that the the people that actually live here aren't going to either be able to keep it the same or make modifications. So, do you want does any of that make sense? Kind so, of. somewhere in September, tentatively, there's going to be a meeting. At that meeting is when the HOA, the running of that HOA. The managing of that HOA and the following of those covenants is going to be then up to the people that live in this HOA. Mm -hmm. Then if the people in that HOA that own lots or homes are going to have votes to then put people on the board. So when it's finally turned over to the property owners that are there and then that board is actually formed, that's when that board can make modifications. Up until now, the only one that could make modifications was the original developer. Mm -hmm. Because until they get to the certain amount of lots sold, it doesn't get turned over. So there's going to be a turning over of the responsibility and the ability to make the modification to the actual um, HOA or the covenants that they're enforcing mm -hmm. at that point in time. And it, you know, reading between the lines from the testimony we've gotten so far, that's not going to happen until the possibility of that occurring for you probably doesn't start until after it's turned over to the property owners. Does that make sense? But don't we still have to have your permission to change the Sure, but I think what we're hearing up here is even if they gave you permission, that's still, you need both. Mm -hmm. So whether the horse comes before the cart or the cart comes before the horse, you still got to get both. You still potentially, theoretically, have the possibility of getting both of those approvals. Mm -hmm. But I think under that standpoint, that's not going to occur until the landowners and freeholders vote and take over the HOA and take over the responsibility, whatever those may be, as outlined in the document itself when it was all approved. So even though the two members we had did give me permission and I have witnesses saying they gave me, and I have the letter, that doesn't matter at this time. It doesn't. Okay. Because unfortunately those delegates of the original developer didn't have the authority to say yes. 
So if you had some, and even if you had approval from the developer himself. Which I did. But let's assume you had right. it in writing for a second. Right. Frankly, my opinion would still be that's not enough. Okay. Because the underlying document itself that's recorded on your property, that's enforceable by anyone else in your subdivision most likely, still restricts it. Mm -hmm. So unless there's a mechanism within the covenants for that to be varied from, meaning somebody has the authority to give you that permission without modifying all of the covenants okay. or that section of the covenants, mm -hmm. it's going to take either a vote to change the covenants. Uh, that's really all the way there's going to be able to do that. The covenants, I'm assuming, basically adopted, maybe with more language, all the things that's in the plat, plus significant more things, plus the, the explanation you have within your note is more than the explanation that's on the plat itself. Mm -hmm. But the explanation for the plat itself is contained in the primary and secondary plat minutes. Does that make sense? So you're at the very complicated stage of the early subdivision that hasn't quite got turned over on the HOA, all because it's starting, it's, it's about percentage of lots sold and developed before it's turned over. Because until then, the developer, until it's turned over, the reason why that is, it's a double-edged sword. Until it's turned over, the, the developer is in, has to do it all. Whatever's required of, that, of the covenants in the POA. As people come online and buy property and build homes, then that's when their responsibility to pay the HOA dues and things like that begin. And then as that gets to a 60 or 80% build out, that's when it's then turned over. Okay. We're just right there. Yeah, we're, trust me, it's a very crowded neighborhood. Scott, from our perspective, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm asking a lot of questions here, I apologize, but uh, when it comes to tabling versus voting, like, no, is tabling still worth it? It seems like that it would be better to wait until September. I guess the question is if we were to vote no, not because I don't want Let's not yeah, vote. That, let's not, not vote no. We're not. Yeah. yeah. We don't know she can't bring it back. If if yeah. we if yeah, if, if right. We don't know. Then that would kill this for too long, right? Right. Well, unfortunately, it'd make her start over. Oh, okay. Yeah. Completely over. No, I don't so. Want that. No. so it's been almost a year already. So my suggestion at this point would be not to table. Tabling is to a date uncertain. Okay. So at this point, my suggestion would be potentially moving this to the September meeting. Because we're the October, because they're we would be the first Monday. All right, so the October meeting, okay. then we got to a date certain, our normally scheduled October meeting. Then that way she doesn't have any more notice requirements. This is notice for that meeting if this motion's made, and then they have a clock that they're working against, and she's got a clock they're working against, and we see them in October and see where everyone's at. Not table. Or not table. Continue to continue. Our Correct. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Yep. Second. Okay. Do -o -do -o. <laughs> Dos. <laughs> like a little buzzer over there. Thank you, everyone. Well, we haven't we voted have yet. We haven't voted, we haven't voted, we haven't voted yet. yet. <laughs> Okay, David Adams. Yes. Austin Bonta. Yes. Tom Cherry. Yes. Kerry Gunning. Yes. Mike Hill. Yes. Gina Geist Hurst. Yes. Luke Wyman. Yes. Denise Little. Yes.
SP0220, Portage Township Trustee, care of the Ross Group, 5901 Carlson Avenue, Portage, Indiana, seeking a site plan approval to construct a 4,500 square foot office storage building for the McCool Cemetery at 2700 McCool Road. Sorry about that. This is a site plan approval, so you won't, you will not have to really sign in if you'd like, or don't. Okay. Uh, my name is David Timmons. I'm with Timmons and Agai Serving Engineering. I'm representing uh, the township, uh, representing Ross Group. Uh, we're proposing to, there's an existing building there currently uh, at the 2700 McCool Road. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than the 4,500 square feet. We're proposing to put the new, a new building up, which would have a new parking lot in the front and would, would have uh, gravel in the back and be enclosed with a fence. Uh, the current site plan uh, is basically the same thing. There's pavement in front of the building and there's a gravel yard in the back of the building with the fence. So we basically want to remove the existing and, in, and put a new building uh, an improved building with additional storage in it and, and features uh, in the same location. Uh, the new building, the existing building does not have sanitary sewer right now, so we're going to, uh, they have a holding tank, so we're proposing a sanitary sewer extension and a water line extension from Cool Road over to the new building also. Uh, The other, the other features uh, for the building would be the enclosed fence. Uh, since we're improving the site, the, the floor elevation of the building is going to be a little bit higher, which is going to also mean that everything else will be a little bit higher. Uh, and that's why you'll see the note on the south side of that uh, parking area as, as a, a retaining wall. There's also a dumpster enclosure on there. Um, the, that will be located inside the fence. I don't know what, which plan you have. The original site plan that I prepared has had it outside the fence, but it will be located inside the fence. Um, so what we're asking for approval today is for the site plan approval, uh, and this is just, just phase one. You'll see on some of the plans that there's a demarcation for, uh, there's a high, highlighted dashed line that indicates what phase one is. So everything else beyond that is, 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 is future phases, which would include a new roadway that would go around uh, new cemetery plots. But that's not as part of the approval tonight, just the, just the new building and the demolition of the existing building and the proposed new building. Um, we would ask also, if you notice on the existing site plan, uh, C1, you'll notice the the wetland area and the buffers that are shown there, you'll, you'll note where those are currently located. And you'll note that uh, it'll, it's, we're asking, uh, the buffers are gonna be roughly in the same location, which means uh, we will need to ask for the stormwater utility uh, variance for that condition. So we would ask that uh, if you do give us a favorable approval that we, that would be contingent upon the stormwater utility approving variance for uh, the improvement inside the buffer area. That's all I have. That's all you have. Okay. Um, I'll open it to questions from the commission. I have a question and you helped answer it earlier, Kurt, but I just wanted to make sure that this was not going to affect any of the no, we're not uh, encroaching on any of the plots right now, and that's one of the reasons why we need to have uh, continue to ask uh, for the variance on the buffer because there's not enough, you know, we're basically going up against where the plots are in the existing roadway uh, on the north of the building, and then on the south of the building we have the wetlands. We're kind of, we're fixed with a very limited amount of space to, to do this on, so we're going to have to ask for that, that variance on the south side. But no, we're not going to be uh, encroaching on any existing cemetery plots. What will be the distance from the plots with the new building since you're 
We're looking for a variance to that. The distance, uh, the variance that we're asking about is with regard to the buffer from the wetland. From the what? The buffer to the wetland area. There's the, the you know, a, a previous uh, petition had mentioned the three buffer zones with regard to uh, waterways, wetlands, and those types of things. That's the same condition in this location. We're going to have to ask for a variance for one of those buffers uh, due to the limited space that we have where the existing building is and where the new building will go. So it's only wetland, it's not any... There's not no, yeah, there's no buffer issues with the cemetery plots themselves. It's only regard to the wetland area. Okay. Thank you. And how many feet are you going into that buffer? Uh, will it be... It would be the entire outer buffer, more or less. I mean, it varies. So, but I mean, we would need that that twenty feet. So the petitioner will be petitioning the stormwater board for their ability to to go into the outer buffer zone. So when you look at my staff report, they've. They've completed everything that we've asked them, but uh, the site plan probably should be uh, contingent on stormwater approval. And we're currently going forward with that right now. Okay. Um, how many more plats do you have left to sell? From what is existing, I don't know. I don't have a count on what plots are available in the existing. Um, and I didn't even really do a full count on what would be part of phase two and phase three on what you'll see on you know, the proposed site plan sheet C2 that shows all the additional plots there. That's, that's just for schematic purposes. It's not really a definitive count on what's okay. going to be there. So you, you do have quite a few to build. It looks like a really yeah. We have perfect. we potentially could have a, quite a bit of plots that we could okay. add to this existing okay. cemetery. Okay. Uh, Kurt, you mentioned on the your you mentioned your staff report. There's three. Uh, it, it's uh, based on approval with the following contingencies. Have are we still have those contingencies, or have they already been addressed and taken care of? When when the <clears throat> when the staff report was first. Uh, written, um, they've they've already provided uh, a photometric plan, and the dumpster enclosure was was changed, and there's additional site plan that was there. So item one and two have been resolved. The only outstanding item is the petitioner would need to attend a meeting of the stormwater board to request a variance from the buffer um, from the buffer zone ordinance for their site plan. To protrude into the outer buffer zone. That is the only outstanding item on this uh, site plan. Thank you. Any other questions? Is this public hearing? No. So I can hear you call anyone. I was just making sure that I didn't miss that part of it. This is new business. New business. I have a quick question. You were talking about you know interfering with the buffer zone. How is that going to affect anything um, going into the buffer zone, damaging any of that wetlands? Well, we're going to have other protections called BMPs in place to mitigate that condition. Right now, they don't have anything. They have the stormwater pipe that just directly discharges. They have runoff from the building, from the parking that just directly discharges. We're going to have a curb on the south side of the property. So that's going to, that's going to be one element that's going to hold water back from just directly discharging. Then there'll also be uh, catch basins on the on inside the yard uh, with structural BMPs inside there to baffle the flow of water so it mitigates uh, any contaminants that would go downstream into the wetland. So we're going to have those other items in place that's going to mitigate those issues that currently are not being protected. Well, the petitioner has been working with the uh, utility, uh, Dan Commenda, on what he's speaking about, the best management practices. Any other 
questions? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, contingent on the approval by the uh, wastewater board. Stormwater. 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 I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. David Adam? Yes. Austin Bonta? Yes. Tom Cherry? Yes. Kerry Gunning? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Gina Geist Hurst? Yes. Luke Wyman? Yes. Denise Little? Yes. Thank you very much. Congratulations. May I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion we adjourn. All those in favor, stand up. <laughs> I want all those in favor stay seated. <laughs>